data on the on the slide, so don't show your eyes. But essentially, this is not my data. This is what you know. Analyst, what you know, different leaders in the industry they are talking about the future of these new technologies. And I will just call out actually, you know, some of these, which is very important for you. If you look at on the left hand side of it. Uh, five years from now, 54 million Indians will hold jobs unheard of today. I think that is very important uh, because the technology, if you look at on the right hand side of it, some actually are very mature and some they are still in the nascent stage. I don't know how many of you, anyone of you in the room has heard about cloud to the edge or edge computing. It's, been, it's already been implemented actually in some, some part of it. Uh, there are some use cases already. How many of you have uh, iPhone X? At home? You would have heard, you would have at least seen it, right? Right? So iPhone X actually has used edge computing. And to make it simple, edge computing is See, currently if you look at the cloud computing actually happening in the in the central server, right? When you start actually having the computing at the near, very close to the device, that is essentially edge computing, right? And more and more operations are or companies are moving more towards that decentralized near the point kind of a computing model. And facial recognition in Apple iPhone X, which is higher in most of the other is actually an easy example of computing actually at the device. Uh, not everything is going to the server team checking and you know there are a lot of issues in terms of latency and performance and you know network and whatnot. So the the point I'm trying to make here is that on the right hand see what you see is gonna change probably next year, right? Next year there will be something new. And what is important for us people in the room is that we keep ourselves up to date on what is happening. We should keep our eyes and ears open in terms of what is happening around us and we should do something about it, right? Because the traditional jobs are going away thanks to automation, AI, RPA, the number of jobs, traditional jobs are going away. You would have seen that, you know, I actually have spent two decades in the industry and every year I, I have seen that the type of people we need in the industry are very different to what we used to have five years back. Right? Limited scope, I am not trying to demotivate anyone here, but limited scope for testing journal going forward. Limited scope for even, you know, as a developer, if you look at now people they talk about full stack development, right? I, I think you need to have full stack developer as an experience. That is what is the need of power. You need to understand the domain. When I say domain is industry, you know, you should know retail, you should know banking, you know. So, I know you, we can't afford everything in the curriculum for your program, but as a student, you should actually have hunger for learning new things. So, that is what is going to help you to build a career going forward. Now, moving on, this actually again is data. You can Google it, you will find it. I have not get it. But actually this is a very interesting, you know, which actually uh, kind of gives you sufficient data points which I talked about on the previous slide is the number of opportunities which we see going forward, right? So what you see on the left is uh, big, big uh, data adoptions and what you see is on DevOps, on the second graph. And how the, the number of employees having digital skill and, and I'm usually using digital uh, word because digital actually has different meaning for different people, right? Some people they say digital means you know you know having a, a smartphone is you know being digital, but digital to me is the technology is the new technology we are talking about. You know whether it is cyber security, blockchain, RPA, AI, machine learning. This is digital, you know, generally which is accepted in the industry. So so again, it actually proves the point that future lies in the uh, technology, right? Now, 
if you really look at right, if you look at we are like in the in the evolution four or four right on the right, I am not going to talk about the earlier stages or the cycles, but essentially every walk of life, right? There is so many use cases on which people are working on currently. Uh, using deep learning, machine learning, AI, and tomorrow something else, you know, will come up. But, but again, now it's all about intelligence, machine intelligence, and how human actually can um, incorporate that into various industries. These these are at, at this point of time uh, what we see as. Uh, the industry trends or, or technology trends. Uh, I'm sure you would have heard of anyone in the room knows about blockchain. Go ahead. So the users back if you are using your own machine. So it uses the user's machine. Great, thank you so much. Uh, so, so if you look at blockchain, uh, if you look at as a as a technology, it's not new. This has been there uh, since I would say about uh, late seventies, eighties. But now we have started seeing that it is actually becoming you know, more and more popular, and there are a lot of use cases. Bitcoin is just one simple example where. Blockchain can be used. But if I give you another example of uh, one of the Indian bank, uh, Axis Bank actually has implemented blockchain. Uh, they, are, they are actually using blockchain as a technology to remit fund from overseas customer, particularly NRIs. So they have tied up with banks in Singapore and Middle East. And they are using, rather than using the conventional SWIFT network or the other network, they are using blockchain. To enable that, that transaction where you know, people can remit funds to their relatives and friends here in the community. Just very simple example, uh, but there are numerous examples where this can be used. And so on and so forth, right? Like from DevOps. <coughs> How many of you know? You you must be using Amazon, right? Yes. For shopping? Flipkart? Yes. So, do you know how many production deployment Amazon has or how quick? A, a production deployment Amazon has every day, or you know, in none, maybe in elapsed time, you know, how many updates they make to their application? <laughs> so billions? No, 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 I'm not talking about the transactions. The the <laughs> updates to the application yeah, for us, which which is invisible to us. Any guesses? Around thousand. Thousand at least. Three seconds. In every three seconds, they make update to the application. So, if they have anything, they need to add a product feature. You know, if they have a bug in their application, whatever it is, three seconds they are able to from development to production. Three seconds it takes for Amazon to make that change to production, and that's possible only through DevOps. Because humanly it is not possible. You know, you test the software, you know, you do it manually, you then deploy it. So, so again, you know, very interesting, uh, very, very, you know, uh, widely used now, and more and more clients are moving to that because it addresses uh, the need of time to market. See, just think from a customer point of view, you are a software engineer, you are actually implementing a, a project for your client. And they say, I want this product project to be out in three months. Uh, 
right? But you say, no, I am going to take one year. Now, one year, nine months actually is a big opportunity cost for your customer. So, DevOps help enable actually, you know, that shorten that window. And of course, there are other things like Agile and whatnot, which actually, you know, you go make user registered, etc. But essentially, these are the trends we see. And then this is the technology as well. Very important. I'm not sure how many of you uh, would have seen the floppy, uh, that five uh, quarter inch floppy, which used to hold some, I think, 512 and KOP, right? And then, you know, there was around 1.44. And then, you know, now data is like, you know, people talk about petabytes and terabytes and whatnot. Right? So, that is one. Um, if you look at mainframe, it started in 60s, you know, still, but then mainframe is no more, you know, that popular, right? Now people are talking about client server, web base, and whatnot. I think the interesting is on the right hand side, right? I think that is very important for you to, to really see because left is what is uh, history, but that actually gives you enough data point in terms of. These, these technologies, they actually had a peak and then they were fading. Even what you see on the right from a external point of view, they are not going to be sustaining you know, that sort of momentum going forward. Like there is something new which is going to come. But essentially what it means is that you need to, again I am emphasizing, you need to be looking for these trends and you need to be aware of and then you need to do something about it so that you are relevant. Right? If you, you are, for example, studying mainframe at the moment, mainframe has no future. I know it is very difficult to find mainframe resource in the market. Probably they, they you know, charge so much to do CHD and BSE skills. But by and large, the demands are very, very strong. 